We're talking about Meta's big announcement, the Quest Pro, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of a twist on there. So Meta, of course, formerly called Facebook, they just announced a new VR headset called the Meta Quest Pro. Now let me direct you to the homepage, an advanced VR device for collaboration and creation. But here's the thing that nobody is talking about. When artificial intelligence is combined with virtual reality, we get something way, way more immersive, unpredictable, and frankly addictive than anybody at Meta wants to admit. In the near future, millions of people are going to put on headsets. They are going to experience virtual reality and it's not gonna to be to socialize, it's not gonna to be to play games, and it's not gonna to be to collaborate. Instead, they're going to completely escape reality and experience a living dream. Like, and I know this seems crazy. I would be the first to question myself, but I'm gonna to point to some evidence. And the first is a developer that goes by Scotty Fox on Twitter. He just embedded an artificial intelligence technology called Stable Diffusion into a fully immersive 3D environment. And if you're wondering what's Stable Diffusion and why would that matter, we're gonna to get to that later in this video. But first, let me just show you these mesmerizing results. Now these videos were recorded inside the VR headset from a first person point of view. So the flat screen that you're watching them on now doesn't do it justice. So just imagine what it would be like to experience this kind of constantly changing dreamlike environment with a VR headset like the Oculus Quest Pro through multiple senses, 360 degree audio and photo realistic images in every direction that you looked. Like, I'm telling you, you will be absolutely immersed. Your brain will just fundamentally have trouble distinguishing what's real and what's not. And that isn't even the most amazing part. The most amazing part is that you will be in charge of controlling this dream. It'll be like a lucid dream. You will feel so powerful. You will feel like a superhero. You will feel, you will feel probably like a god. You won't be a god, don't let it get to your head. But you'll feel like it because you will be able to speak whatever you want into existence, see it, feel it, experience it on the fly, in real time, every time you put this headset on. Look, and the reason that I can say that this is going to be an experience that millions and millions of people have access to is because we see the early version of the artificial intelligence software that can diffuse these kind of images. We can see that every major tech company is heavily investing in VR and the metaverse and headsets. And as that technology becomes easy to use, dude, lights out. So because of that, I have no doubt that eventually these kind of glasses and these AR and VR goggles are going to just be easy to find. They're gonna be cheap, they're gonna be light, they're gonna fit in drawers with your other glasses, and they're gonna be fully immersive, and they'll be as easy as pulling up a TikTok app on your phone. It'll just be putting the glasses on, requesting something to happen, and you're just there, and you can take it off to do other things in life. And at that level of user experience, we are going to have people completely addicted to this kind of experience. I mean, you know I could go on for hours and hours about the endless scrolling TikTok feature, that quick hit of dopamine. It's like the casinos have left Las Vegas where I am and gone into our phones and hijacked our brains. And this is going to be even more immersive, even more free flowing, even more engaging. And then of course, once the companies that are producing these things also are collecting data, where our eyes go, what engages us, what we're doing right before we take them off to use as negative feedback, they are going to have the ability to modify these things so that they're instantly more addictive. And it's just going to get out of control. Okay, but before I go down that whole rabbit hole, if you just wanna get a little bit closer to the experience that I just showed you, these videos have been uploaded to YouTube 360, and that will work with current generations of Oculus and similar VR headsets. So I tried it and I can tell you from firsthand experience when I actually took off my quest, I felt like I woke up from a dream. It took me a second for my brain to comprehend, oh yeah, this is reality. I mean, I've had that experience in a few different games too, so it's not like this is the only thing that can do it, but it's immersive. 
Okay, so to help illustrate this vision I have for the future, let me walk you through a few scenarios. And a side note, the images that I'm showing you on screen, these were actually generated by Stable Diffusion. So the point is, no human artist made any of these. They're text prompts that I typed in with a few extra descriptors, and then it dreamt, that's the technical term, it dreamt these images into existence through a process called Diffusion, which we'll cover later in the video. So for our first scenario, imagine in the near future, there's a bride to be. She's got a limited budget for her wedding and the choice between either hiring a traditional wedding planner or simply putting on a VR headset, describing what she wants in real time to a machine intelligence system and then instantly experiencing whatever she imagines. As quickly as she can speak any changes into existence, she can watch them change right in front of her eyes. For example, she might start with something like, I want a wedding in a beautiful cathedral that is the ideal size for 100 guests. And then, you know, after doing like a quick count of her actual family and friends, she's like, oh, I need to adjust the cathedral's capacity to 200 people. Simply says that out loud and watches it. And after that, she might wonder about like a handful of different venues, right? Like some indoor, some outdoor. And the second she speaks them into existence, it just changes and she feels it all around her. She might imagine a wedding with a mariachi band, right? Or a giant stuffed teddy bear or fireworks or whatever she maybe could be possibly in her budget. Or maybe she thinks about the dinner tables and just as quickly as she can say it out loud, daisies, petunias, roses, she watches them, speaks them into existence and instantly sees what it looks like. Her wedding is being created in her imagination, her mind's eye, but in a way where other people can experience it. And depending on how seriously the world takes privacy over the next few years, which hoping that we take it a little more serious, but assuming we don't and we stay on the path that we do, it probably would be no problem for her to just snap her fingers and say, I would like to see all of my friends and the machine will instantly and simply dream up photorealistic three-dimensional avatars representing very close approximations of her real life friends. The system in the cloud can just access the essentially like your Facebook friends and just know who they all are and probably have seen photos from all of them and scanned them all in. So boom, there you go. Now you've got all of your actual friends populating this wedding that you just created on the fly. And at this point, the bride-to-be could simply hit save, take off her headset, and either email the whole experience to a traditional wedding planner to make it a reality, or even further into the future, I could imagine that when you generate something like a petunia, a flower on a table, you could tie that into some warehouse somewhere where they take flowers and they deliver them for a fee and then just say, hey, I want this kind of arrangement at this location at this date for my wedding. They just bill your credit card and at your wedding it shows up. Or imagine a student. Let's say he has homework that's related to the Egyptian empire. So traditionally, a student might get sent home with some questions and then the accompanying, you know, textbook or lecture that they need to look through and synthesize to answer the questions. But one of the most incredible things about the way I see this technology evolving is that you should be able to just dream up either whimsical fiction or historical fact just as easy and just as quickly. So a request such as bring me to a historically accurate version of the ancient Egyptian city of Alexandria around the year 400 CE. Something like that, a prompt like that spoken verbally should limit the experience dreamed up by this VR version of something like Stable Diffusion to the best approximation of historical facts, allowing a student to learn from experience. So now this student can simply look around, see the Egyptian empire in all of the reality that we know it as, historical fact based on what we know. You know, obviously it's dreaming interpretations, but it will add people, it will add sounds, it should feel like a completely photorealistic video game. And if this student wants to simply walk up to somebody and talk to them, of course it can translate and it's not gonna be in Egyptian, but you would just talk and it would translate it. But he could go up to somebody and say, hey, tell me the answer to this question, or I've got you know, this homework that I'm doing and I need to know the answers. And he should get a one of a kind experience because the way that things like Stable Diffusion dream up the images that they show, and in this case, the 3D environment is different every time. The student's experience will be 100% unique to him. It'll be based on the unique context of that moment. Any subtle shift in eye contact, body movement, or spoken word will change the experience because 
they call it a seed, but when you have something diffuse into reality, it starts as sort of a messy jumble of static. But all those little things, all those ways you interact, they change the way the world is created, just like in real life. Every time you go somewhere, it's going to be a completely unique experience from any experience that anyone has ever had before. It's a very powerful way to think about digital environments. For my final example, imagine a teenager who's obsessed with magic. Maybe she grew up dreaming that she could one day go to school at Hogwarts. And she has the dream of one day headlining a magic show in the fabulous Las Vegas. From the comfort of her own bedroom, she could ask for her desk to be transformed into a sold out audience. As she pets her dog, she could ask for the dog to magically transform into a white rabbit. And that leads me to today's sponsor, The Magic of Jen Kramer Show in Las Vegas. So to be clear, it's not really a sponsorship because Jen Kramer is my girlfriend, but she really is a headlining magician. And there's a link in the description below so you can see her show next time you come through Las Vegas. Now, back to the video. To dream images into existence from a text prompt, machine intelligence systems use a type of neural network called a diffusion model. So recently, these have been shown to work remarkably well when it comes to image generation tasks. Now, the thing to point out here is that these neural networks were not trained on fully formed images like most neural networks. The magic in these models comes from a special process called diffusion, where researchers train this type of neural network on blurry photographs. This forced the system to dream up something real from something more ambiguous, more fuzzy, and more imaginative. And of course, at first, the machines were putting out terrible results, but they hone in on final products that looked good to researchers. So as they trained it, as they gave it feedback, this forced the system to dream up something real from something fuzzy. That's the process of diffusion. These learning systems, these neural networks, they only got positive rewards once they learned how to take blurry images, make them crisp, make them real, and make them something that a human would see in real life. So the metaphor that I imagine for this is like an old television with static all over the screen where some guy from the 70s is like playing with the rabbit ear antennas and trying to improve the signal, you know, and then he keeps like nudging the, the antennas around and the signal gets kind of like blurry and then goes away and then kind of gets blurry and then finally like looks like a clear signal and then the family in the 70s like sits down to watch... Um, I don't know, days of our lives or, or whatever was on back then. So the system keeps nudging the randomness, the static into patterns. They keep kind of forcing little changes and it, it iteratively gets closer and closer to something like moving through frames in a movie. So until what started out blurry turns into something that the viewer understands. And in the future, this is how entire 3D environments in every direction you look are going to pop into existence. This is how they're going to be dreamt up in real time right in front of our eyes, in real time, fully immersive, 360 degree VR experiences. So these early prototypes are already incredibly immersive, but imagine what a few more years is going to bring. So the current apps, headsets, and games, they just don't tell the full story. Because AI technology like Stable Diffusion is just still simply relatively new. But fundamentally, there is a platform moving beneath our feet. It might go unnoticed for now, but at some point one day, it's going to be impossible to ignore. Hey, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, press the notification bell with either your pinky or your nose, either one works, so you can be updated when I publish new videos. Really helps out our channel. Here is an image of three puppies on the moon eating ice cream, all thanks to Stable Diffusion. And since Stable Diffusion can dream up anything, let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to generate at the end of the next video. And I would love to hear in the comment section how technology like this might impact your life in the future.